Hey friend, hey, it's Denise Renee. Quick question, have you been job hunting in 2023? Because I have, and let me tell you something, it's giving, I don't know, child. It's giving, are you really trying to hire for this job? Or did you just post it because you legally had to? Allegedly. I'll tell you what it's not giving. It's not giving a paycheck, okay? I have been job hunting since the top of the year and it has been a long, <laughs> process. I am a marketing copywriter, content writer by trade, and I've been freelancing for the last six or so years. In between, I've taken different jobs and side gigs. And at the top of the year, I decided I wanted to pull back from freelancing, reorganize some things, and smooth out my income, plus get some daggone health insurance again. I kind of miss it. So off to the job hunt I went. It seemed like everything was great post pandemic, people hiring, companies being so open to flexible working and working from home. I mean, I've had a hybrid schedule at different jobs since the early 2000s. So it's really nice to see the rest of the world catch up. But as they say, yesterday's price is not today's price, baby. <laughs> 2022's job market is not 2023's job market. And it seems so ridiculous because when you look on LinkedIn, when you look on Indeed, there are tons of job listings everywhere. And yet it just seems like, are you guys really, really hiring? That's what it feels like to me as a job seeker. But I know that there are two sides to every negotiating table. And in one job that I have, I was actually on the other side, the hiring side. So I do have some insights from an employer's perspective as to what could possibly be going on right about now. For one thing, when an employer puts out a job notification, I'm sure you know they are flooded, inundated with tons of resumes almost instantly. Back in 2007, at another position I had, I was hiring for an assistant for myself. And I worked with the HR department to put together the job description and they put out a job description on Indeed. Within a day, I had about 300 resumes. And I'll tell you that more than half of them did not fit the job description. I was just like, did you read the job description at all? So number one, HR departments are overwhelmed with resumes. Now back in the day, I weeded out the candidates myself by looking at each resume. Nowadays, HR departments invest in software to help weed it out. So if your resume doesn't have certain keywords that they're looking for, and if your resume just does not fit the job description, don't waste your time applying because you will just not be considered, period. They're only gonna invest time looking at the ones that the AI tells them looks like the best match. Another thing I can say from the employer's perspective is that in that particular situation that I had where I was hiring for an assistant, I whittled down the competition to about five different applicants. I called them up, I got about three of them to come in. You know, there were good candidates, but there was something about each one that wasn't an ideal fit. And ultimately, we wound up giving the job to someone internally. And my boss made the decision to give him a shot. So sometimes that could happen. Not only are you competing with the 1,159 other candidates who submitted an application, but you're also competing with internal employees who already know the culture. Speaking of culture, that's another thing to take into consideration. So employers are not only looking for someone who can do the job, who has the skills, they also are looking for people who are going to be a great culture fit, who have the right mindset to work in their specific environment, deal with their specific clients, and to fit into their particular culture. The last corporate position that I left was really because of culture fit. I didn't fit. And I was just like, you know what? This is just becoming toxic for me. So peace out, homies. So sometimes you might feel as a candidate that you are a 100% fit for the job on paper, but you may not have that specific je ne sais quoi that they might be looking for that is that missing piece to fit into their environment. So just like you have requirements, they have requirements too. Not to mention, sometimes employers know that they need this position filled, but they're looking at forecasts. They're looking at their projected sales. They're looking at what's going on in their industry. They're looking at what's going on in the economy, nationally and globally. And maybe they started the process, but then they may have decided we need to pump the brakes on adding a new hire at this time. And that's just information that you sometimes just never get. And on this side of the negotiating table as a job seeker, it's frustrating. So here are some things that I'm doing to keep my job search sane and to stay positive throughout the process. Now, I'm not a coffee drinker, but if I was, I would take my coffee with two creams, three sugars, and five pumps of patience because it's just necessary. 
I started submitting resumes in January and it is now September. I've had some interviews along the way and some jobs have responded back and said thank you, but we've made a different decision and others have simply vanished in the wind, ghosted me, and it happens. And it's frustrating and it's annoying. And so the second thing that I do is just take a break when I need to. You know, there was a job that I really, really, really wanted back in May and it didn't come through and I was just like, pump the brakes. I just needed to take a pause from my job hunting activities because I was, you know, I was a little crushed. And it's okay to take a break. You need to for your own mental health. Okay, I needed to for my own mental health. The third thing that I had to do was just regroup and get my life together. I'm not gonna lie, this year has been very tough for me, financially, mentally, spiritually, and honestly, I had a little bit of a breakdown or a panic attack towards the end of July. And I reached out to a few friends and was like, I'm not okay. And my mom told me, draw her everything and come home. So I went home to New York for a week, got sick while I was there. But whenever I get sick, it's like, I can't do anything. So it really just kind of laid me out for about two weeks. And I just couldn't do, I literally could not do anything but focus on getting better physically, mentally, and spiritually. And that time of rest, that time of doing nothing was really restorative to me. And so I've come back home to the Atlanta area, really refreshed, rejuvenated, and I restarted my search and I have a couple of things right now so we'll see what actually turns up and another thing that I did is I revitalize my daily spiritual practice. As for me, I'm a believer in Christ. I do my best to actually apply the teachings of the Bible to my life. That's where my faith is. So for me, that looks like daily prayer, meditation, and Bible reading. Getting back into that routine, making it the first thing as part of my day has been rejuvenating. So I would encourage you, whatever kind of spiritual practice you have, or if you don't have one, start one. Because it's so easy, at least for me, to get stuck in my mind about what I have to do, forgetting that I'm connected to something bigger than me and that life is not just all about paying my bills. Now, I would highly recommend if you are currently in a job, don't quit. Last year, I left a job that was very low paying for me, took up a lot of time, and was creating a whole lot of stress. And it was causing me to work my side hustle around it, and I was really exhausting myself. So from that standpoint, I don't regret quitting the job. But it was a loss of income, and I thought that in my side hustle, I'd be able to make up the difference, but I wasn't. Things are changing there. And then also at the same time, I had to move and my living expenses literally doubled on me. So it was a whole bunch of things that really contributed to me having, <laughs> let's just call it a lot of stress in 2023. But when I look back on it, I'm like, could I have held on a little bit longer? Because I knew I was gonna move. That extra money could have really helped. So if you are currently in a job, I strongly recommend you stay in that job no matter how stressful it might be at least it's an income that you can count on for now number one you don't know if an opportunity may come up soon where you can make a shift and do something different or if they're about to make layoffs and then you have the right to claim unemployment you have no idea so hold on to whatever income source you already have while you are looking for another source of income because it's hard out here in these streets. The job hunting process is just super long right now. And my final piece of advice is don't listen to the news about job hunting, the job market, any of that, because it's all conflicting. I tell you, for every article that I see about employers are forcing workers back into the office, I see a whole bunch of other articles that say employers are embracing hybrid working and working from home. And then for every article that I see talking about employment rates are the lowest it's ever been, everyone has a hiring sign out. On the flip side, I see just as many articles and videos with people sharing how difficult it is to get a job right now in late 2023. To be honest, the jobs that I see with the we're hiring signs are the low paying retail, fast food type jobs and jobs that I'm looking at with my eyes that are being replaced with automation. When I walk into Walmart these days, I see more self-checkout lanes, less employees actually helping customers, 
and more of those employees doing jobs such as stocking. So it doesn't even seem to make much sense to get into these types of roles because they're slowly being phased out. Oh, and I do have one more piece of advice. I strongly recommend, and it's something that I'm doing, is increasing your skills. Find a course that you could take online that will help you gain specific skills in specific areas so that you can be more desirable. I'm enrolling in a couple of certification courses to help bump up my resume. So that's what I'm doing to help me stay staying in my job search here at the end of 2023. Do you have any tips that you would add to this list? Go ahead and drop them in the comments below for me and I'll see you guys in the next video.